In this tutorial I'll be showing you how you can animate fractured objects using Element 3D inside of After Effects, we'll be fracturing text using Blender, and I'll show you how to export it back into Element so we can animate it. So let's get started with fracturing our text using Blender. Now I do want to mention that this is my very first time using Blender, I only went ahead and learned how to do this for the sake of this tutorial, I do have 3D software knowledge, but I've never used Blender before, I figured I'd make it here because it's free and most people have it nowadays, so let's do it here. Let's go ahead and delete these. Hit Shift A and create a text here. Let's move using our mouse wheel. Zoom in. Yep. And to edit your text, you're gonna hit Tab, select it, and type your text. And once you're done, tab again, just like Notepad. Okay. Now under this A icon here, you have fonts, and you're gonna pay attention already to the regular one. And if you click on this folder here, this should open up all your fonts here and you can select one to work with. Once you've done that, go into your modifier properties here with the text selected, add modifier and solidify. Now let's set the thickness here to 0 0.1, uh, maybe 0 0.15. It basically determines the extrusion of your text. And once that's done, add another modifier called remesh. Go into the sharp tab and remove this connected. Under depth here, type in eight, that should be enough. Basically, if you set this to five, for example, we get some artifacts, six, we still get some artifacts. So eight to be safe. And if you go under object properties here, viewport display and select wireframe, you can see we retopologized our text, but if we go ahead and make the depth like 10, you can see it gets way too detailed and we don't need that. That's going to crush our software. All right, let's go back here and disable the wireframe. Select your text, right click and convert to mesh. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and break it. Go into edit, preference and under add-ons, type in cell and make sure you have object cell fracture here selected. So once your text is selected, click on object, quick effects, and cell fracture should appear. Okay, now in here, you don't want to mess around with too much. Let's go into the source limit here and set it to 125. This is basically how many fractures we're going to have. The margin here set to zero and make sure debug boolean is selected because I found this working best for fracturing text. Hit OK and this should take a few seconds. There you go. Once that is done, you can go ahead and hide the very first layer here. And as you can see, we fractured our text and we're ready to export it. Let's go ahead and select it. Go into File, Export, and export it as OBJ. And I do recommend you export it twice. Just hit Export, and the second time, select Triangulate Mesh here, and export it once again under a different name, because Element likes this, and sometimes you might get artifacts, and this should be the fix for it. So go ahead and export it. Now let's go into After Effects and create our composition here. This will be fine. And I'm gonna create a solid for my background duplicate it and name this element. Create a camera and add element to this layer. Let's go into our element and import the 3D model we just created using Blender. It should come in something like this. So you're gonna hit R for scale and make sure you're centering it while all three selected and scale it up like so. Let's hit E and hold shift and rotate this. If you're hitting shift, you're basically snapping it. This is me doing this without shift and this is with shift. Okay, so as you can see, if we go to the mesh view here, we have all these little pieces here imported as our text inside of element. Let's go ahead and duplicate this group folder and make sure this one is set to number two here. Let's go into our presets here and into the materials and let's uh, drop something white on the first one and something glowy like this green light that I like to use on the second one. And you can change the color by going to the illumination here to anything you want. I'm gonna go with green for this one. Let's hit OK. Now let's go into group one here, particle look and multi object. Now you wanna make sure this is enabled and this basically controls all the small objects that are inside of one group. So all the objects are gonna be animated individually using these settings. Let's enable it. Now under group utilities in group one, let's go into copy here and select copy, go into group two 
and select paste. So we just pasted the same settings we created for group 1 into group 2. Now under multi-object in group 2, you have rotation random and what that does is basically rotates each fracture piece individually. So we can set this to like 300 and let's go to the size here and set this to 0. Now make sure you're going to the size under multi-object here because this scales each individual piece from its origin. So as you can see, it goes from the center of each piece. Unlike if we go into the particle size here, it scales down the whole thing. So make sure it's under size here, set to zero. Now let's start with the fun part. Let's close these down and go into animation engine. Let's enable it and set the start group from group two and the finish group to group one. Animation engine is still a setting that really impresses me, even that I used different particle in 3D softwares in the past. This one is still very convenient and great to work with. So if you go ahead and animate the animation here, you can see that we have group two transitioning into group one by this setting here. And we can set this to radial. So it starts from the middle and outwards. And if we go to direction here, we can do the same thing, but in the opposite way. So it starts from the outwards into the middle. Let's go ahead and set this to directional. And if you go into directional options, let's set the pitch here to minus 90. So it goes from bottom to top. Now, another thing you might want to play with is the smoothness. I usually like to set the smoothness to around 30. Because if we scale up the smoothness here, you can see it goes this one piece and it's not really effective. So setting it to like 30 is something that I like to do. Let's go ahead and set the animation to zero, hit the stopwatch, go into three seconds here and set this to 100. Let's play it back. And as you can see, we got group two animating into group one, creating our text from little pieces. Now let me show you why I've chosen a glowing texture for the second layer. So if I go ahead and duplicate this element layer and under output here, change this from composite to illumination, you can see we've isolated the glowing texture and we can go ahead and add a glow to it to make our effect look even better. So let's go ahead and add a glow. I'm gonna use dip glow for this. Maybe scale this down and set the layer to additive. And as you can see, we've got this glow only appear on the pieces that are glowing. Okay, so that's how you create animated text from fractured pieces. Now let me show you how you can do the same thing, but with objects. So let's go ahead and select our camera, element, and background. Let's copy these, make a new composition, and paste it. All right, so we have the same type of composition here. Let's go into our element and delete these. And here under starter pack, you should see ball fracture or floor fracture. You can choose either one of them. Let's go with the ball and we're going to do the same thing. Duplicate this folder, set it to number two and drop our green texture on number two. And just like that, we already see the same type of effect, but with a 3D object. You can do this with any pre-fractured object. So just like we did with text, you can fracture it using Blender and import it here to achieve a similar effect to this one. Now let me go ahead and show you how I created the first scene that you've seen in this video. So let's disable our animation engine for now. And under pitch here, where we change the direction, set it back to zero. Let's go into group two and disable it for now as well. And in group one, we're gonna go ahead under particle replicator and set this to ring. Set the count to about 10 and scale up the shape. Let's drag this down. Maybe scale this down a bit. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So under group utilities, copy it, go into group two and paste it. Now under group two, let's drag this up. So we just created the same effect, but in group two and under multi object of group two, let's set the random here to 200 and the scale to zero. Once again, enable our animation engine. We'll keep this at directional and let's go here. And as you can see, we have a transitioning. Let's go ahead and change the pitch here to minus 90 again and the Yao maybe to 90. Let's play it back. And as you can see, we got this transition, which is kind of fast right now, but let's extend this. So like so. And all I did was animate the camera moving through these. Okay, so I kind of wanted to make this a complete tutorial. So I'm going to show you how I composited one of those shots uh, using depth of field and such. You can skip this part if you know how to, but I'm just going to show it for the sake of the tutorial. 
So I have this animation here that we created using the same method and a camera movement going from top to bottom. Let's go into our element here and under physical environment here, I have selected show in background. And to change that, you go into your scene setup here. Under environment, you can select an image that it will reflect and such and show you in the background. Let's go back here and under ambient inclusion, let's enable it and maybe set it to 10. So this gives us some nice ambient occlusion. And under lighting here, set this to, I usually like to go with cinema, play some with these settings here until you get something you like. Now for the depth of field, there's many ways you can do this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it inside of Element. So under depth of field here, under the mode, set this to focus illustrator. Now go to your camera and hit double A. Under depth of field here, make sure it's on and play with the distance until you see something red. Basically, the red area is where the focus is gonna be on and whatever is not red is gonna be blurred out. So let's set the aperture here to about 40, the blur level like 100, you can play with these later. And if you have some camera movement, you might wanna animate the distance here. So let's say here, that's all right. And you can extend this to show the full object this is really depending on what you're doing. So here you can see I want it to be red and this is what we got. Now let's go back into element and set it back from focus illustrator to pixel blur. And if you zoom in here, let me set this to full. You can see we got that nice depth of field. Let me turn it off and on so you can see. So it just makes it look much nicer. And this is how I've created this. Let's go ahead and add motion blur on, just like we did before, duplicate our layer and select output under composite, change this to illumination. Add a glow to it, set it to additive and just like we've done before, just to give this a nicer look, let's pre-compose it and maybe add some curves like so. Basically composite this the way you want to. It will get pretty heavy because the depth of field and the motion blur but look at the amazing results you can get with just a few clicks. So this is how you create this type of effect, fracture text elements or anything else in Blender and animate them using Elements 3D. I hope this tutorial was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.